Now we're going to focus in on the ones that are kind of like stagnating, somewhere in the middle. Really not increasing, really not decreasing, gonna, you know, uh, maybe slightly increasing or uh, slightly decreasing. Uh, so we're going to look at Evansville, Fort Wayne, and Terre Haute. Uh, and I'd, I'd argue that those three uh, cities all have something in common, which they're pretty much uh, the only uh, game in town. And so if you look at uh, Fort Wayne, Evansville, and Terre Haute, they're pretty much the only big city uh, that surrounds them for about an hour's drive. And so they become regional centers. And I'll explain more of that here in a minute. Uh, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the South Bend, Mishawaka, and Elkhart Goshen uh, into one group. Which makes sense because if you look at the dot map on the top right, you can kind of see them all link uh, together. At South Bend, Goshen, Elkhart, Mishawaka are all kind of one conglomerate. Uh, almost together to be the size of maybe Fort Wayne. We think about this area, we think about its connections. It's very well connected to Chicago. Uh, well connected to Detroit, well connected to places out to the east and to the west, uh, but a little bit difficult, more difficult to get to uh, South Bend from the south. And so Indianapolis and South Bend have kind of been disconnected. You know, there is an interstate that goes through there, uh, United States 31. However, it's not uh, as fast, not as sophisticated as the interstates you'd find 69 and 65. Of course, there's a perception that this area has got to be doing well. It's a college town. and We've learned college towns do great. Uh, but if we think about the nature of Notre Dame, it's a private institution. Uh, it's a lot different than Purdue and, and uh, IU in terms of uh, the number of students that come here, but also uh, the type of student that comes here. So because of that, uh, you do not see a large benefit, let's say, uh, from the university in uh, the surrounding areas that you would uh, maybe in Bloomington or Lafayette. But by far the biggest industry and the one that's very much the under key to understanding Elkhart and why Elkhart Goshen is doing so well uh, is one major industry and that is recreational vehicles. And so the moral of the story is when uh, there's a bullish RV market or when RV, uh, RVs are, are in high demand and people want them uh, then the jobs increase in the particular area. They're starting to manufacture more. Uh, but when it's a sluggish RV market, when they kind of aren't something that people want, uh, then jobs are lost. And so they had just in 2008, at the start of the economic recession, 5,000, 6,000 jobs that were lost from uh, the decline in the RV industry. And this makes sense. Uh, first off, economic recession, you're not going to have a lot of extra income uh, to be going around traveling the entire country. Further, look at the miles per gallon for these suckers. Uh, so as gas prices go up, uh, demand for RVs go down because if you can only get, you know, uh, you know, if you can only get about four miles per gallon, then what's the point uh, of spending so much money uh, just so you can urinate and, and poop in your own uh, vehicle? But anyway, uh, so now what's happening is the recreational vehicle market is back increasing. It's back. Uh, it's, it's flourishing again. It's a bullish market again. Uh, why is that? So a lot of the baby boomers are retiring. Uh, so once again, we go back to demographics. And so a lot of the baby boomers are retiring. And so what that means is more of them, uh, because you know recreational vehicles, you don't see a lot of 20-year-olds uh, driving them around. You see a lot more older people. And so when they retire, uh, they'd be more likely to buy an RV. And so that keeps uh, the, the, the market uh, quite invigorated. And so this is definitely a situation up here uh, where Elkhart is growing at the moment because of the RV industry. And so as it grows, it's going to attract people to come in. And so you're seeing a lot of new migrants, particularly international migrants, that are now moving to this particular area of the state. Back in 2008, President Obama used Elkhart to showcase his economic policies. Uh, and so he actually spent the last minutes there before uh, his campaign ended in 2008 in Elkhart. Uh, but as soon as he was president, so soon after the inauguration, he visited Elkhart. So he's pretty much using it as uh, kind of a, a symbol of his economic ideas. Uh, but with that being said, the RV industry uh, was around before President Obama and will probably be around after. Uh, so a lot of that was uh, more, you know, a lot of their economic growth is more related to uh, increasing demand for their number one product uh, more than uh, economic policy from a particular leader. Uh, but nonetheless, you can see how it's becoming used at the national level, especially related, related to this platform. And although this is a bit dated, uh, I show this more uh, to kind of showcase the predictable patterns. And so it seems 
like you see a trend here, like the green line and the blue line. If you follow it close enough. Um, so what happens is Elkhart Goshen might have uh, a higher unemployment rate uh, than South Bend, Mishawaka. Then you go four or five years and then things change. Uh, so it's a very predictable pattern you see up here. And so this also explains a lot of the migration patterns. So when things are good uh, in Elkhart, it's going to attract people. People are going to move sometimes from South Bend. Uh, Mishawaka within the metro to Elkhart and Goshen and vice versa when Elkhart and the RV, RV industry uh, go in the tank then people move to South Bend. So you can see it's very much this predictable pattern up here within uh, this particular area. And we continue with that automotive focus and so uh, here we see some foreign direct investment, uh, a uh, electric car company that uh, uh, considered Elkhart uh, it is still in the process of actually uh, making it here, uh, but nonetheless it shows uh, how we still have this automotive kind of uh, concentration here in Indiana. Um, so automotive still matters, it's just it's changing. Um, so our, uh, RVs are obviously different type of automobile, but the electric car. Um, so the electric cars got some positives and some negatives, uh, <laughs> uh, but it also is something in which it's still uh, to be determined where uh, that industry is going to flourish and where it does of course uh, we'll see a subsequent growth here we see the population pyramid for south bend and mishawaka and this further underscores my argument that you don't see much of an impact in this particular area from college students and so while you have a very uh, prestigious uh, nationally known uh, university here it's not a big one it's not going to attract it's not it's, not, it's very very small uh, very very selective uh, admissions uh, so we compare South Bend to Elkhart and Goshen, you can see a different pattern. So you see fewer of those people that are college age, but a lot of young people. And to understand this, this is, has to do with the fact that there's a lot of Amish people that live in this particular area. Um, so yeah, I do, you know, Amish people aren't living right there in Elkhart, Goshen, right down in downtown, uh, but they're living on the outskirts. And so Amish people typically have higher total fertility rates, higher birth rates, and all that goes along with the, uh, the absence of contraception. It's not like the Amish are putting on prophylactics and uh, taking birth control and all that stuff. Uh, so that explains this large uh, youth population uh, that you find there in Elkhart. So here's a place uh, that going forward you're going to see potential for, uh, potential for more elementary opportunities. So you're seeing elementary teachers, I in fact know one personally, uh, who moved up here for a job. Uh, so this kind of, once again, we can see these different dynamics in different areas. We can relate it to population, economics, and all of that good stuff.